Welcome to the 1875 podcast, the weekly podcast all about Blackman Rovers, brought to you by RoversChat.com, the number one Blackman Rovers fan website. Welcome back, brand new season, brand new show, and uh, we're going to get into covering what has happened in the summer so far. Uh, first of all, I'll introduce the regulars from last season, obviously. Welcome back, Matt. How's your summer been? All oh, right, it's, it's been a, uh, a, a delight, guys. Good to be back, of course. Uh, obviously, we've had the World Cup to keep us pretty occupied with the football. Uh, you know, great summer, but... It's England, and they, it's, they always they always seem to let you down. But it's, it has been a it has been a great summer. So you would class it as a letdown. Were you not pleasantly surprised at how far we got? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I suppose because obviously the level of expectation wasn't you know wasn't uh, you know wasn't set high like it it normally it was. But it it, it was just it was just really a good buzz. Um, you know, le- you know, going through the group stages, obviously hammering Panama and obviously a little bit of a disappointment with with the Belgium, the first Belgium game, um, and then we we just seemed to kind of like kick on. I, I thought, you know, genuinely we might have gone on if we got past Croatia. I reckon we would have give France a good game, but you know, that's that's just my opinion. Yeah. What about you, Tom? Welcome back. How's your how's your summer been? No, I very much echo what Matt said. Obviously, World Cup's been there to keep us preoccupied in terms of football. Uh, so we've had our fill of that, but I'm I'm looking forward to the season kicking off now and, and getting back to what we all really care about. Also, we don't care about England, do we? Oh, well, you care about England, <laughs> but if I, if I was to compare who I care about more, then I'd probably say Rovers over England. Yeah, yeah hometown and all that. It was a great summer though uh, with the World yeah. Cup and whatnot. Pleasantly yeah, surprised by England. Four and a half years now till the next one as I w- it was pointed out to me on Twitter. Aye. Um, but yeah. So yeah, as you say, back on back onto the home club. Uh, it's been quiet in terms of incomings but we've been fairly busy on uh, keeping the current squad together. Uh, what have your, uh, your thoughts on the business so far, Tom. What what stands out to you as as, as the best things? Um, I mean, I suppose the the number one for me is probably making sure we've got the players signed up to new contracts. Obviously, Dak still had a I think three years left in his contract, but it was good to you know reward him and and um, I suppose give him that extra incentive to to remain at the club for the foreseeable future. Uh, Lenehan as well, you didn't want to get to a situation with a year remaining where we're going to have to sell him for peanuts or let him go on a free at the end. In terms of new players coming in, uh, I've not been disappointed. I think that Rothwell and Davenport are both going to be good additions. I think the midfield is stronger now than it was last season. Um, But I think the squad as a whole is probably a little bit weaker just because of the fact those loan players obviously left, the likes of Antonsen and Armstrong. Um, like you look at Antonsen, was I too bothered about us not signing him? No. But he gave us an extra option, didn't he? At the moment, if Graham and Dak don't score goals, where are they going to come from? I still believe that Mowbray's got a trick or two up his sleeve. I'm not worried that he's going to bring no one in. But it's one of those where you look at it and you, you just want you want a new signing, don't you? But I think so far, I don't think we can complain with the summer. I think that I think we've had a, a relatively decent one. We just need to get get in a striker. Yeah. What about you, Matt? Are you happy with what we've done so far, or, or would you like to have seen a little bit more? Uh, well, uh, just to echo what what Tom said, really, that you know you're happy that you um, you know you're happy you end the likes of Bradley Dak to uh, rewarded with a new contract. Um, Tom Switch on it again. Lenehan uh, signing another four year deal. Smallwood as well. Uh, Derek Williams and obviously Scott Warden as well. He's, um, he, he's shown promise, but obviously he's, he, he's been longed out again for the season. So it, it, it does start to raise questions. You know, what, what, you know, what's the, um, what's the likely 
who the target's going to be, where where they're going to sit in the squad. I think I think we've got you know we've got quite a, a you know a bulky midfield um, selection now with obviously Rothwell and Davenport coming in there as well. You know, um, you know he's gone for youth. He's gone for you know hungry players again. Um, I've, I've been impressed what I've seen of of the two so far. Um, so let, let's let's hope you know it is it is picked two you know two hidden gems really because I th- I'm, I'm not sure what you guys know about you know Bradley Dack and Richard Smallwood all this time last year but I didn't know I, I'll be honest with you I, I didn't know a lot about them um, especially Dack really he was kind of unknown unknown quantity you know he was at Gillingham and you come in I thought all right okay you know we're just, we're just we're, we're building up a, a new squad and hungry players and he's you know he came on leaps and bounds you know when he finally got got round to starting a few games so hopefully you know history is going to repeat himself but I think I think um you know th- those players are going to need to take a big step up I know I said this towards the end of of, of the last season you know th- those players now they're, they're going to have to take a, a big step up this season it is a very very tough league. Um, yeah, incoming, yeah. In, incomings, uh, yeah. Obviously, you still want to see more incomings um, coming in. Uh, strikers, I think, are a priority, and, and, and perhaps another centre back. And you know, you're probably looking for a bit of competition, uh, perhaps a, a right back there as well. But as as um, as a lot of fans have said on on social media, in, in Tony, in Tony, we trust. Yeah. Well, just to touch on what you said about Dak and um, Smallwood last season, I don't really know an awful lot about Davenport and, and Rothwell. I, I know Davenport was at City, so he, he must be half decent. Um, but like going back to last season, I think if I had to pick the players that I was most excited about were like Samuel, Whittingham, uh, and I think I even like looking towards Gladwin to have a decent season and. Let's be honest. Two of them didn't really do anything, and one faded away after half the season. So, I don't know if you have any thoughts on Davenport and Rothwell previously, Tom, of, of how they've done or, or what we can expect. Uh, yeah, well, I think the Davenport and, and Rothwell. I think they've come with pedigree. You have to look at Davenport. Was it, is it was at City? Uh, Rothwell was at United as a youngster. So they've obviously got some quality. Um, you know, I know that. He was in a team that got relegated last season, Davenport. But from what I've read and from what I've heard, he seemed to be one of the few shining lights in that squad um, at the back end of last season. So, you know, I'm happy about them. Like you said, there was players that we didn't really know much about, like your Richie Smallwood last season. And there was a player like Peter Whittingham that came in and you thought, yeah, he's going to be a big one. He's that's put, He was the player that really kicked off our business, I suppose, and he was the one that you looked at and thought, for League One, that's a, a good addition. And as it turned out, Whittingham was one of the disappointments of the season and Richie Small was one of the, the revelations. So I'm definitely not writing them off. Um, but in terms of knowing about them, I don't know a great deal. Um, I have been impressed by both of them, though, from what I've seen so far in pre-season. Yeah. And obviously, well, we've said there's a, it's quite bulky that midfield area, so there's, there's plenty of competition there. Um, I did have quite a few things to talk about, but this, we've got an absolute ton of questions which seem to cover most of what I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to skip on to the, um, the new quiz thing that I've got where you and Matt are going to face each other each week if you're on. Um, but. We need some sort of buzzer from you both, so I, I need some sort of identifier of who's going to answer first. So, like, if you if you want to make a noise or something, okay. or say something, okay, um, me, um, I'll, I'll put something just, on. Like, on let my me know what, what you want to say. Find one of the uh, so just sounds. make something up now, so it, uh, me and the audience know what who who's who. Um, so I'll, while we're sorting that out, I'll just say the, the usual stuff. Obviously, if you want to. Send your questions in. Uh, we'll be reading them out in a short while. Send them to at Rovers underscore chat on Twitter, the Snapchat, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Um, I'm sure I'm missing something out there, but I, we're on pretty much all the social media platforms. So just 
wait for that thing which comes out about Monday, Tuesday. Just saying, send your questions and send them in. Uh, and obviously keep your eye on roverschat.com because it's starting to pick up now lots of articles about game-related stuff and, and just everything. So make sure you keep your eye out and uh, follow the Twitter. Um, are we ready, guys? I am. Um, got my buzzer. This is it. That's it? The siren? No, that, that was outside. <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, living in... The Rosendale Valley, uh, you know, perhaps isn't the right. You ready, Matt? First question. Yeah, you ready? So do we yeah. just so let's get, so we we buzz in and then first to buzz in, first answers, to buzz in and then you answer. That, that thing. And right, obviously, okay, if you're then. wrong, it goes to the next person. Right. Um, hopefully, you get some of them. Right. So to start off with, question number one: What year was Davenport born? I think who Tom was first? The both so similar. Who's is the who's is the buzzer? Man's a bear. Uh, uh. Right, so it was Matt. Matt was first, I think. So go on, Matt. I disagree. <laughs> Matt is not even the it, right. You can't like buzz and then Google it. I'm not googling it. <laughs> what? What's the answer? No, what was, the the answer is uh, 1997. No. Tom. I was say 98. Yeah, 98. I hope that's right. I googled it before it was right, so that's one nil to Tom. Right. Second question. What minute did Nuttall score against Lincoln? Tom was first, I hope. Thirty second. I'm gonna clue. No, wrong, Matt. Thirty-eight. No, it was the forty-third minute. I had to. That you don't know how hard that was to find. Like it wasn't in a report. It wasn't on the Rovers website. I was scrolling all over. The, I had to go into the Twitter feed of Rovers in the end to find out what minute it was. Um, so right. Remains one nil. Yeah, um, yeah, neither of you got it right. So, 1-0 to Tom. Uh, I haven't got a tiebreaker question, so hopefully I didn't get that far. Right, what is Joe Rothwell's middle name? <laughs> I think Matt with the buzzer. Matt was first. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think it's um, the same as my first name, Matthew. Yes, it is correct. one all. Oh, it's definitely it's Googled. <laughs> definitely Googled. That was that was actually a stab in the dark. <laughs> it was a good stab. Oh. <laughs> All the names in the world. <laughs> the best one. Right. Question four. I'm hoping this is a bit of a trick question it's going to get you. How many ex-Rovers players currently play for Norwich? Tom? Three. Four. Four. What, you, are you going for four? Yeah. Four, yeah. Incorrect. Matt? Three. Yeah, correct. Two, you one, can't Matt. say it. It's a trick question. When there's obviously three, how is it a trick question? But, well, it wasn't a trick question, but I... So I, how do you say it's a trick question? <laughs> I didn't say it was... Did I say it was a trick question? I said it was. It might be a trick question because I... Who would, Who did you think the four were? I'll give you a point if well, you... No, know. I knew there were three. I knew there was <laughs> Rod, Hanley and Marshall. But the fact that you said trick question, I thought, well, they've all recently signed, so there must be another one from way back when. That's why I said four. I was thinking most people would still think like Olsen still played for them. So well, he's not been I... there for three years. <laughs> it, was a... yeah, it was a trick question because I tricked you by saying it was a trick question. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Continue. Right, I'll, Continue. Give you, I'll, give you, I'll give you a point for naming all three. 
Okay, then. This, will be the, this is the tiebreaker. So this is a t- it's 2 2 then, I suppose. Yeah. Right, the final question. Um, what is the minimum amount of games we will play this season, not including the pre season? Go on, Tom. 48. Correct. That I was thinking that might be a trick question because everyone thinks 46. But yeah, correct. Tom wins. 3-2. It wasn't bad for the first attempt. Obviously, Tom got a bit annoyed when I said <laughs> trick question. I just... I take winning very seriously. <laughs> um, I, uh, how do you feel after yeah. that, Matt? Do you, f- you feel a bit cheated after the, the whole trick question debacle? Yeah. We go again next week. Yeah, yeah. I hope this runs on and it's close because it, I think that'll be quite fun. But yeah, yeah. Well done. I don't. I would never not have got any of them. To be quite honest, uh, I might have got the Norwich one. Um. So as I said, we've got an absolute ton of questions to go through. So I, I won't bother with the stuff I wanted to talk about. Um. We'll start off with a question from Nick, uh, from Snapchat, uh, from Twitter, um. As it leads on to something I did want to talk about. He put, it's going to be dominated by potential signings and the people's anxiety about the slow business because we've got, I've got to read, like he's not real, because we've got nothing else to chat about, yet we have Winky Face. Uh, <laughs> but you could raise the issue of which of the younger players are going to have to be promoted into the first team. Um, so what are your thoughts about that? Tom, do you think we we um, we need to promote the younger players unnecessarily? Because obviously there are a few breaking in that um, I think we're going to come back to later on a question. But do you think we have to rush any through? To, to just I think if if we're avoiding the obvious three of Travis Nuttall and Tomlinson, because those are the obvious three, aren't they? When you think of players that are ready to make the step up or could make the step up, those are three that you look at. Um, if I avoid them, I mean, there's a couple. Uh, I know Simmons, okay, Simmons, Simmons, he got a hat trick last night, didn't he, against Darwin? Uh, similar, sim- blah, 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 blah. similarly to um, Nuttall, who got a hat trick against Darwin last season. Yeah. Um, I mean, where well he did. So you know, there's there's a bit of maybe Simmons. If we don't get a striker, he could be looking in and around that first team. Um, but I doubt it. Uh, I believe it is it a guy called Evans, a fullback. I think he got a couple of assists last night. He he meant to have played quite well. Um, and then I think another one that catches my eye, but he's been injured, is uh, Joe Rankin Costello. Yeah. Um, I think he's a he is a talent. It's a shame that I don't know if he he, he broke his leg or something of that ilk. Um. And he's, he's obviously the injury has probably pegged him back, but he's a player that I look at and I I would really like to see uh, in the next couple of years, you know, make that step up because I, I do think he's got a, a lot of ability. Um, but yeah, there's no one really that jumps out. Like last last season, you looked at names like after his pre season, you looked at someone like Nuttall who, who jumped out on the page. Uh, Tomlinson's been in and around it for a couple of years now, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, and obviously Travis last season especially really started to up the ante um, and sort of became the one that we looked at and thought would make the biggest impact. And given his pre-season performances, that's that's uh, we were right to think so because he, he's been brilliant so far. But avoiding them, there really is no one. I know I've mentioned three, but there's, there's no one that really jumps out to me in the way that those three did do last season. Yeah, what about you, to- um, Matt? Are we a, a little bit disappointed of how slow it's been in this window, especially given that it's going to end um, at the 9th of August this year, which is like almost a month earlier than usual? Yeah, uh, it's... A lot, of pe- a lot of people are concerned. Um, I, I'm, I'm cautious that we are perhaps kind of leaving it rather late and uh, and perhaps it is um, in a way in a good way because we, we never I mean we never really saw the, the two guys who have signed so you know already 
really. I mean, I know we were linked with Rothwell um, early on in the summer, but you know, it wasn't. Uh, you know, it wasn't kind of the Jacob Davenport. I know we were kind of linked, but you know, when, when we actually signed these, you know, they, they, they came totally out of left field when they were actually confirmed. So I, I still think there's there's a bit of business that Mowbray and his recruitment team are working on, and um, I, I don't think the there will be necessarily an urgency to to rush any of the uh, development squad through who have not already kind of given a taste of first team action to him. Obviously, we, we've drawn Carlisle in the cup, so that kind of gives uh, an opportunity for um, you know the, some of the the youth team players to you know have some first team right bench experience. But I think it's all who we actually bring in in these next kind of nineteen eighteen days where. Uh, we're hoping that we, you know, we we sign uh, some some uh, more permanent players, but we've always got that that low market to explore there as well. Yeah, um, I've n- I've not been too obviously you like more, but I've not been too worried. I've I've seen people starting to get worried. I saw um, an image earlier, twenty three days since Rovers made the last signing. Obviously, last year was quite exciting when it was like they were coming in quite quite fast because uh, we had quite a large turnaround. But would you would you say there's any uh, urgency in, in putting any youth players into the first team, Matt? Because that's what people are starting to say now. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't think so because I, 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 I truly believe that they'll, we will get perhaps maybe one more permanent signing, perhaps a striker. Uh, and then you know we're, we're going to have to look at obviously that free transfers and, and 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 then look at the loan market, which then we've still got the rest of what August to to do that. So uh, I, I'm I'm cautious. I'm not getting overly overly panicky about it. I, you know, there's there's one player I'd I'd like us I'd like us to see like wrapped up, and that's Adam Armstrong. But you know, we'll, we'll probably get a, a question about that, and I can give my thoughts then. Yeah, right. So we will move on to a couple of the questions. Um, Nat Brig, uh, Nat underscore Briggs seventeen from Instagram has asked about four or five questions, I think. Um, so the first one, uh, this episode probably won't be out, be out before the Everton game, but I'm, we're going to answer it anyway just to see if we're right. Um, so Tom, I'll start with you. What score do you predict for the Everton friendly on Thursday? I'm not sure, really. I mean. It's all about fitness, I suppose. So goes the uh, usual saying. Um, I, I think we can give them a game. I'd, I'd probably say maybe 2-1 Everton. What about you, Matt? one all. one all. Uh Oh, God. I've got, I got 1-0 Everton, I think. I don't know. I think we might struggle to score, but we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll score a few. Um. So on to the second question from from Nat. Uh, where do you think improvement to the team need to be, Matt? So where, uh, where's the weakest area? I think yeah, obviously everything yeah, is striker. Yes, yeah, stri- striker without a doubt. Um, okay, yeah, we've we've give Danny Graham another another year. Um, was that the right decision? I, I mean, I, I think so. Um, you know, we, we we've given an, an, another year now. Uh, see what see what he can do um, back in the championship. See if he can try and give um, give it another go, so to speak. Obviously, then we're expecting the likes of Dominic Samuel to take a step up. You know, he, he, he kind of he kind of struggled towards the the back end of um, the League One season. You know, didn't get many goals uh, towards the back end. Joe Nuttall is obviously inexperienced at this level. So yeah, we, we we definitely need a lot of firepower. I think two, I think two strikers minimum. So um, and then you can pro- possibly see, you know, Joe Nuttall either going out on loan or, or maybe you know just taking that tiny step back into the development squad if he wants to. You know, that's he might he might ask to go out on loan to get more first team experience like Scott Wharton's done. You see, so. Um, yeah, so definitely, uh, my main concern is is up the the top end of the park because 
you know, it did. You, you've got to look at, at Danny Graham's age, you know, age now, not being, I, I'm, I'm older than him, but <laughs> he's, he's 32. Um, but, you know, you've got, you've got to, you've got to look at his, you know, his age and, and the level that he's playing at now. Hopefully he can, he can prove, uh, he can prove a lot of people wrong uh, about, um, about his goal ratio in, in the championship. We'll just have to wait and see. So yeah, definitely uh striker for me. Yeah. What yeah. about you, Tom? Obviously, like uh, Matt said, we've got Graham who may be coming to the end, um, but has proven goal scorer for us and other teams. We've got Nuttall, who we're all excited about, but again, another question mark. Samuel, another question mark. He showed he can score in League One, but went off in the second half. Do you think we, we're going to be able to get a proven goal scorer? Is that what we're going to want, or is it just... Strength in numbers, so we've we've got the options. Proven goal scorers cost money. Like I know all yeah. players do, but look at how much we fought out for Jordan Rhodes. Like when was that? Six years ago now. God, that makes me feel. Oh my! Wow, that, I'm that, only, was that long? I'm only twenty, <laughs> and we signed him six years ago, and I feel old. But no, you look at how much we spent on him. Eight million, and when we came, when we first came to the championship, we broke the record for the highest spend on an individual twice that transfer window. The first being Leon Best, the walking, talking disaster himself. And the second being Joram Rhodes. Now, you look at the money that's been thrown around now, how much would Joram Rhodes have had, had cost back then? So to get a proven goal scorer, you having to spend a lot of money. I mean... And Unless it's sure. someone else like Danny Graham, who's coming to the end of the career, and uh, again another question mark on whether he can still do it. But there you go. There's the question mark: is whether or not that he's going to have that ability to find the back of the net regularly. Um, I think that in terms of proven goal scorer, we won't get one. Um, I think in terms of young up and comer who's looking to prove himself, yeah, I know that there's talk of a Lucas Nemetcha who's at Man City, he's meant to be quite the talent. Um, obviously, you'd hope, with Davenport being at the club, you'd hope that maybe he could put a good word in for us there and, and convince him to come to us. Um, but, you know, we're looking at players like that that maybe are hungry to score goals, not necessarily players that are proven. Because, um, like I said, they cost too much money. I know Sam Gallagher's name was, was batted around a little bit and I don't really know whether he found the move, but is that... Do you know if that's over? Has he moved, or is that still? Uh, he's, from what I've, from what I know, but then I'm, I'm not saying I've got links with anyone at all. But from what I've read, um, I think Stoke putting an offer for him of eight right. million. Um, of course, I, I'm going to claim that's true. That's just what I've read. Yeah. Um, but I think that he, he 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 could be a good option to come on loan. He didn't have a bad first stint. I know that people tainted his time at the club because of the game against Preston when he should have kept the ball in the corner. Um yeah. so that, point crying up spilt milk. Yeah. Um so I mean, yeah it's just a case of I think we don't necessarily need an out and out goal scorer that's gonna get twenty five goals, twenty goals, similar to what we had with Rhodes and Rudy. Because if we can say Dak can get ten goals and Danny can get ten goals, if you've then got Another strike, another player that can get 10, 15 goals. Um, Don't forget Mulgrew getting then, 20 odd. <laughs> no, but <laughs> you know what I mean. You, you, yeah. you, you look at those, then then there's goals dotted around the team. So it's not necessarily we don't need that striker that's going to guarantee us 25 goals as long as we can spread it out. And I think if you look at it, that's similar to what we did last year. I mean, Graham and. Dak both and Graham got seventeen and Dak got eighteen. Mulgrew scored about fourteen in the end. Um but then the word the word goals dotted around to Antonson got seven, Armstrong got about nine, yeah, uh, Samuel got eight. So there were goals dotted all around. Is that the, the worry club. though that, that we've lost um Armstrong and Antonson, who got us into double figures? Samuel has not proven at this and then with them are left with Graham and Dak, really. Um, I can't see Mulgrew scoring as many as he did last season, to be fair. Um, yeah, where did they like come I said from at the then? top of the show, 
Yeah, like I said at the top of the show, I mean, probably our squad overall is weaker than the one that finished the um, season and champion in the League One, sorry. And that's not a criticism of, of anyone or a criticism of the team, because I think with the current team, I think we would stay up. About, wait, we will, no, I, yeah, I think we would stay up with the current team. Don't think we do much more. I don't think we get to comfortable mid table. I think we'd stay up though. Um, but it is overall a weaker side because you've lost Antonson. Um, yeah, he wasn't the best player, but he had he, there was a bit of depth. Yeah. Um, same with Armstrong. Armstrong was brilliant in League One, and you know he's being touted at three million. I, <sighs> Don't think it's a, a good deal for us at three million. This is for a player that, as good as he was last season, hasn't yet done it in the championship. Has scored very few goals in the championship. I think he scored about three, and he has had chances. Um, that's not to say I wouldn't welcome him back. Of course, I would have welcomed him back with open arms. But for at three million with the wages he's on, for me, it's it's a bad deal. You don't want to waste your entire budget on one player that is not proven at this level. Yeah. Um you'd rather spread it out across the across the squad so you can bring in a player that's for about a million, then bring in one that's five hundred thousand, then look at the loan deals. Well like we said before, a proven goal score costs money. And if you're spending probably a, a big chunk, if not all of what we've been allocated on um a winger, if you will, because he I think he's unlikely to play up front. Um then he's going to get goals, but is he going to get us enough goals where it's warranted spending all that money? Uh, but who knows? It's a bit, I think it'd be a big gamble spending three million on someone like Armstrong. Yeah. That's not to say I don't appreciate him and rate him as a player, because I do. But like I said, it's just for what he's doing in the championship so far, this isn't the first season back, isn't a season for trying to build players. We need a season of consolidation where we've got a squad that can keep us in the division. And spending three million on three million, we might not even have three million. But say that our budget is was four million. About a million of it has gone with Davenport and Rothwell. Yeah. To then spend the rest of it on Armstrong, for me, is silly. It just doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if, if I mean, if you think about it, I mean, say say. I don't, I, you, you might know better how football contracts work. I mean, you, you don't necessarily need to pay the full three million out in one hit, yeah. do you? Unless the unless the you know the selling club insist on it, or else they won't do the deal. I mean, I, I was trying to work it out if if we do say right, we'll give you we'll give you two point five, we'll give them a three year contract, and we'll spread you know we'll we'll pay installments over over that three-year contract providing he stays. I mean, I, I was looking, you know, looking back over my memories and, and uh, on Facebook and, and there was a, a you know, was going back to John Rhodes here, his, his, his contract would have run out this summer uh, and yet we were still paying Huddersfield. You know, we obviously we paid him off, but you know, the way, obviously, I, 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 like I said, I'm not entirely 100% sure how, how football contracts work, but you don't necessarily need to pay Full three million to Newcastle United. You go in and say, "Oh, we'll give you two point five million. We'll give you, uh, I don't know, one million up front, and then the one point five million over the over the terms of the contract, and and see how it see how it does that way." I mean, like I said, it is it, if we really want him back, I, I do think that we'd 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 try and work, you know, work a a sort of arrangement with with Newcastle. It, it's obviously he doesn't uh, Rafa Benitez doesn't see his future there. He he enjoyed it here last season. He's got you know good rapport with the players, good rapport with the fans. As as Tom says, he's he's pretty unproven at this level. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good idea, really. If 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 that's if that can be done, then it... well, a, a, loan, a loan deal to a, to a permanent. You know, yeah. loan, loan to permanent. They, they're doing what they're doing that with uh, what's it called, Jack Colback. Uh, he's just gone to Forest on a, on a loan deal with an option to buy at the end of the season. Yeah, this is the option. Though, it's whether or not it's worth it. Like I've said, like you talk about playing in instalments or performance-based uh, add-ons. So say he gets 
20 league goals over the a three year period, then Rovers got to pay an extra 500,000. Yeah. It's whether or not it's worth it because it could be a massive thingy. And it's more than just the, the payment to Newcastle as well. I mean, you're looking at Armstrong on hefty wages. Yeah. You'd have to take a serious pay cut to come here. Um, and it's like Mowbray said at the, the consultation meeting, this is a player that isn't proven at this level and do you really want to just give away that much money? Um, I trust what Mowbray is doing. I think that if he thought Armstrong was the man to fire us to safety, fire us to mid-table and beyond, I think he'd have brought him in, no doubt. The fact that he hasn't done shows that he's not. I think it's the same with Harry Chapman. I love Harry Chapman. Um, Mowbray said there was a de- that, that Mildersborough would do a deal with us and Harry wants to come back to the club. Um, but it's, it's whether or not this is a player that's going to make a massive, massive difference in Mowbray's eyes. And that's what it comes down to. Us as fans... We don't, what we think at the end of the day, in, in regards to transfers, doesn't particularly matter. We can all go on Football Manager and look at players in five years in the future and look at how uh, one player's doing and, oh, well, could have signed him, done this, done that. I mean, at the end of the day, this is like real life. And Mowbray needs to look at players that fit the mould that he wants. And I think that if he wanted to bring Armstrong in, if he wanted to bring Armstrong back and was desperate for it, it would have already happened. Same with Harry Chapman. If he really wanted to bring Harry back, I think it would have already happened. Um, and take from that what you will. I could be way off the mark, but the impression that I got, especially at the supporters meeting uh, a few weeks back, was that those two, if he'd have wanted them, then a deal could have been done or would already be done. And I think he's he's looking at other options though and just making sure that he brings in the right type of player. Yeah. I think that excellent point. I think it's quite interesting really um, because I think a lot of fans, the end of the season would have, have, have blown everything to get Chapman and Armstrong back because a lot of people are calling for them. But if, if you sit back and think about it, like Tony said, how much of a risk is that? Chapman's been what, injured for two seasons, three seasons in a row. Armstrong's not proven. Chapman's not really proven. If you go out and just blow everything on them and say, right, th- th- these are my boys, next year, complete failures, them two and Samuel do nothing, you're left with a broken team and probably in League One and a lot of money has been spent. So, yeah. you can. See- it's not a game where you can look back, is it? When you, no. you look at, oh, well, I like that player. He's a nice lad. I mean... It's like Mowbray said. Mowbray said at the consultation as well. He said this: if we brought Harry Chapman and he wouldn't be starting, he'd be coming on off the bench because right now he's not the finished product. And do you want to spend? He, said, he did say Chapman could be done for relatively cheap. He thinks, but it's whether or not it's worth bringing in. Because if he's not going to be starting, is that money better suited to a player that is ready to walk into the first team? And and stake his claim um, I know we have gone off, gone off on a bit of a tangent <laughs> yeah it's been quite long but, but, uh, uh, but it, you know what you mean yeah. ultimately but, yeah. it's got to be we're not in a position to take risks on players and spend money that we I don't think so not this we, so that's what it comes down to I mean I trust Mowbray in his recruitment because it's been really good he seems thorough in it so I do trust what he's doing um, so as as Matt and said earlier in, in Mowbray we trust and He'll be working his magic behind the scenes, but we'll move on to the next question. Um, Sam Potter914, um, I'll send this one to you, Matt. Uh, is Dak, uh, Dak's contract the signing of the summer? Uh, so far, yeah. Um, two years in a row. <laughs> um yeah, well, it turned out to be in it, uh, as I was saying there before. Yeah, it, 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 I think it was important that we 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 got Brad tied down to an, another contract. Obviously, it was kind of our uh, 
uh, what's the word, kind of our, uh, you know, our linchpin. Um, you know, our, 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 I'm going to say snowman, but yeah, he, he was, you know, he was, he was uh, very important. The talisman, yeah. uh, you know, he was our talisman uh, at the uh, throughout last year. You know, he, he started pretty, pretty slowly. I think he was on the bench, I believe. I think for uh, the first couple yeah, of games, and and then on the fitness wise. Yeah, and then uh, you know, just just to you know, just to see how he was actually, and from then on, it, I think his kind of you know his, his confidence grew, and obviously now it, it, his persona has come out, and you know he's, he's kind of like the life and soul of the life and soul of the party you see, and, you know. So yeah, um, yeah, it, it, it's it's great that we you know we've tied him down for another three years. Uh, I'm not again. It, it's probably got him a. A bit of a pay rise there, which which he fully deserves for the for the work and commitment and uh, the achievements that he he uh, he achieved last year. Um, you know, team of the season, player of the season, uh, accolades, um, uh, Rovers player of the season, um, goal of the season. You know, it's it, it's it, 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 I, I don't think he could have. I don't, I don't think he's got enough room in his mantelpiece to. Uh, all those awards and again um so but uh yeah it, it as i said it's great to time down to another three years what that kind of contract includes behind the scenes is, is another another story i don't think we we care that much i, I think he'll he'll definitely try and take the, the necessary steps up he i think he's wanted to play at a championship level for quite a number of of times and that's what he came here to do he saw blackburn rovers as a as a chance that you know we would have a a, a, a a very good chance, uh, more so than perhaps Gillingham. No disrespect, but uh, to play in in the, in the championship, and you know, I, I we saw him against Liverpool. I, I watched the game against Liverpool. He played absolutely immense for the for the first half, uh, and if you can do that against Liverpool, show the kind of skill, determination of, of you know taking players on and. Uh, not Megan James Milner, you know, he's uh, he's been not Meg by Messi and Bradley Dark now. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, it is an important player. Glad we've got him signed to a new deal. Let's hope he st- you know he stays and uh, grows into the team, and you know is is not kind of um, not used as a, a kind of make weight to you know balance you know balance the books as uh, as such. But every every player has his price. Yeah. And- See, I'm going to throw a spanner in the works a little bit for uh, for this one, Tom. For you, I think Lenny Ham was maybe a better deal with his contract running out, the interest he's had, and he's such a rock at the back, and especially with um, potentially Mulgrew maybe being his last season, uh, maybe his last season for Rovers. He keeping him around is massive. Obviously, Bradley Dak had quite a few years left, so I don't know what your thoughts on that are, Tom. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that, actually, Lee. I mean, Dak, Dak signing their deal, of course, is brilliant. Um, as we said earlier, and as, as Matt just explained, um, but Lenihan, you know, this is a player that he's probably, probably going to be a mainstay at Rovers, at the centre of Rose defence for hopefully for quite some time and signing him to a deal. How many is it? Four years? Yes. Um signing him to a signing him to that four year deal, uh yeah, I think that that's a fantastic bit of business. And probably does trump the da- the bit of DAG business to be honest with you. I think that it's a very a very solid point. Yeah. Well glad I was half right about something. <laughs> Right, um, ben from Snapchat. I think it's Snapchat. We got a lot of images through and kind of lost what was what. But Ben from Snapchat. Um, Tom, where will we finish this season? I think we've sort of touched on this a little bit already. Um, where will we finish this season? I'd be happy, you know, if we finish around fourteenth, thirteenth. So let's let's have a boring. Boring consolidation season. I'm gonna go with about about 14th finish. What about you, Matt? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to agree with uh, with Tom. I think it is 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 going to be a bit of a consolidating season. Hopefully, a few uh, a few surprises along the way. Uh, good surprises that is. 
six points over Wanderers would be good. Um, so yeah, as long as yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, I, I think it's going to be a, probably a consolidating season. Hopefully, we you know we, we we start well. Um, obviously, we didn't start well last season. Hopefully, we start a bit better this season. I, I'm, uh, we've got what Ipswich away, yeah. Millwall at home. Uh, I'm, I'm probably happy with four points out of those two games. But uh, finishing uh, anything above that, you know, that bottom three, and when you know we're not going down to a nail biter on the last game of the season. Like we yeah, did last I time mean that's the, the problem. The, the championship is tough, and we we knew that from last time. But it feels even tougher now with some of the teams that have come down from the Premier League. Well, they're, they're coming um, down with so much money. I mean, I th- what was what was uh, Gary Neville saying at the uh, the Wembley thing? Um, the the you know the, they're coming down with a hundred million guaranteed. You know, the the I, I know that the, the the parachute payments have certainly changed since Rovers relegate from the Premier League. You know, they're coming; they're able to kind of say, you know, say to their players who want to stay, we can still, you know, supplement your wages to stay and try and get us back up. But they're more likely to, you know, you know, it yeah. is. I mean, look, and and you know, you look at Wolves last season. I mean, they just didn't you know they were just like blowing people out of the water, weren't they? Really, but I mean, that's because they had new investment. Yeah, we've well, got to look at Sunderland though that came yeah. down not last the yeah. season before, and they've gone straight down. I mean that that money isn't always helpful. It sometimes only keeps the club running. It doesn't mean that, but they, they, yeah, we'll, we'll their, rec- their recruitment was bad. The the manager manager choice was bad in Grayson. Uh, they they've paid the price for for a bad investment there. Yeah, yeah, I can't imagine Stoke. Um, and the others going that way, but we'll, we'll wait and see. It's going to be an interesting season. Um, I'm hoping for anything above top three. I can't really say much more than that, to be honest. Um, we'll move on. BRFC Joe from Twitter. Um, I think this is pretty much a similar question. Um, where do you think our current squad could place in the championship this season and why? So we've basically answered that. And I think if we... Do you think there is any way, Tom, we could finish like mid table and, and pretty safe if we make some more acquisitions, or do you think the squad? Because we're not going to make too many more transfers, but do you think transfers could change where like safe, comfortable, or struggling? I think the the, the addition of the addition of a possible. striker. I think we can we can finish mid table comfortably. I'd say around fourteenth, like I said before. I think. Bringing a striker, maybe not centre half. I think that mid, comfortable mid table yeah. is is pretty realistic. Um, the next question is um something we've we've kind of already answered, but we'll go again. BRC Tom from Twitter. Um, would you rather have Chapman or Armstrong mm-hmm. back, Matt? Uh... Out, out, out the two of them, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Armstrong. Um, I think if we, if we can try and, you know, do some sort of deal for, for him, good. But then, you know, do want to kind of get, get, you know, Chappers back on a, on, on a loan, you know. But we'll, 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 we'll see. Uh, out of the two, I'd say Armstrong because. I mean, obviously, you know, Chapman, he spent a lot of the time out last season injured, didn't he? So, he had, he had the potential to contribute, but when it, you know, when it came down to it, he, he didn't due to injury. Well, you, Tom? you the same, I presume, and I'm pretty sure most people uh, would pick on Probably, Tom. yeah. Um, I do prefer Chapman as a player, but I think he's, he, Chapman's more of a risk in terms of injuries. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, right. So the next one, talk of evil Twitter. Uh, what would your starting eleven be for Ipswich tomorrow if uh, if the season started tomorrow, Tom? So let's just have a quick. How would you line up? Would you have? Would you play five at the back, three centre mid uh, defenders? Do you think that's um, how he's going to go? I think that is probably yeah. How he's going to look at playing? Um, but it's not how I'd play. I don't think. Right. Okay. Okay. Preferably not. I'd play. Should I say? 
it's a tough one that because I don't particularly like five at the back. I, I prefer a, a flat back four with a midfield five with three of those midfielders pushing further up than the low man up front. If I was being, do you think we have the squad for that three attacking midfielders though? Which is why probably I would have to go with the flat back five. Um, yeah. Don't know though. Right, it'll be Niambi, Lenny Hunt, Williams. Oh, yeah, I think Mulgrew, that, that'd be the, the back Bell. five. It's just then I'd probably go. Yeah, how would you put that midfield in? Where, yeah. I mean, would you go for a midfield three of, say, Davenport, Rothwell, and Smallwood? And that behind Dak, is Graham. And then and Graham. Really. But then where do you put someone like Elliot Bennett? Does Bennett get a look in? Because you've, you've got, I think you've got to fit someone like <clears> Bennett in the team just because of the work rate he brings. Um, so I honestly don't know. Um, yeah, I don't. I haven't really seen an awful lot of the other two. Um, so I, I think I'd have to go um, Smallwood and Bennett. I wouldn't want to play Bennett uh, though, maybe. at centre mid. Um, I honestly don't know. That, that's a tough question. <laughs> yeah. What what about you, Matt? Are you can you decide? Would you go five at the back? Um I have just just been looking at the uh the, the squad really, what we what we've got at the moment available to us. Obviously Raya starts in goal, um Mogu Lenahan at the back. Um Willie, Williams and Niambi uh, wing backs, yeah. Start with the, start with the four midfield. Uh, Bennett, Rothwell, Smallwood. Uh, it, it's it's very difficult, isn't it? Really. It's very difficult. Dak more advanced midfield and and Danny Graham up top on the squad that we've got there now, but it's uh, it, it, it's tricky. Um, I think we are very short on wingers to play, um, like four in midfield. Conway can't. I don't think Conway can play thirty eight, thirty six, whatever games a season. No. So, I, like we need. I think we need a, another option out there. To be fair. So they'll be, they'll be I, I think the only way we can play is a, is a five. Fair enough. With the current squad. Go with that. But, let's let's yeah. hope there's some more additions. Yeah, I think I think we need a winger and a striker. Um, Armstrong, I think Armstrong would fill that gap for the, the winger anyway. Uh, but we'll wait and see. Um, where are we now? I'm going to butcher this name um, because I can't. Is it Raj Raj go? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Nailed it. Twelve on Twitter. Um, letting Wharton leave on loan was a mistake or the right decision, Matt? What do you think? Um, for his own development, I think it, it was the right decision. Uh, I firmly believe he would not have been allowed to go out on loan had we have not had we not got some sort of replacement lined up. So, um, you know, obviously he's, he's, he's signed that new contract, which is great. It's great. You know, it, it's great for his kind of, it's, it shows how, um, how much he's valued at the club. But I, I, he's what now? 20, 20, 21, uh, 20. Um, so I, I, you, 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 you've got to, you've got to, you've got to be, you've got to be honest with the lad, and you've got to say, right, okay, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to, do you want to stay here, and you know, you might get the probably a league cup game. You would probably get, um, um, you know, some games in the development squad. Um, F, you know, low round FA Cup game, depending on who we got in the draw. I think mean, we go. We, I think we go back into the third round, being back in the championship now. So yeah, yeah. you know we we you know we're gonna get we're gonna get clubs from League One, League Two, or possibly a Premiership club or another Championship club. So 
he might not be involved in that. Or do, do you say to him, do you want to do that? Or do you want to go back out on loan? Uh, you're in the, you know, you're in the first team. Usually on week out, week in week out basis. I know he did. I think he he played. Um, the only we didn't play that often, did he at Lincoln? I don't think last last year he got. I think he played nine, eight eight or nine times maybe. Um, so it is, you know, it, it it's just to be, you know, get that experience of, of being in a first team squad uh, week in week out. Uh, he'll probably get more games, I think, this season with, with Lincoln. So hopefully, that you know, they give him a good run in the team. He gets, you know, builds experience. Uh, the, I, I do believe there's some sort of recall on him this time around. So we'll we'll just have to uh, we'll just have to. See how, how that pans out. For I think it's a good it's it's a good decision for him uh, for his development. Yeah, for me, last season with his chance, he uh, uh, would he going down a league. He had a chance. I would have thought to to try him out. Uh, instead, we got down and he was he was pushed out. Uh, there was a lot of chatter that he wasn't Marbury's kind of player, and he, Marbury wasn't injured. Obviously, that maybe was rubbish with him getting a new contract, but. Is it is it a problem, Tom, that he's played in League Two? He's not even like a League One player, or do you just think that's because he's he's familiar with Lincoln, so he's gone back? It'd be better getting a bit more higher uh, experience, wouldn't it? Surely. Um, I think it's probably like you say, it's a case of being in a place that is familiar. Um, he'll probably he'll probably be one of the better. Defenders at League Two level next season, season of confidence, and then maybe we can send him out on loan to League One. You know, next season. Um, I don't think it's because he's uh, not good enough. You know, I personally don't think he is, just because of the players that we have in terms of defenders at the club. If you go through them, he's not going to get in ahead of Mulgrew. Um. Mulgrew is coming to the end of his career, though, to be fair. Lenny Hearn looks like the defender we're going to be building a lot around. You've got Williams that can play there. That's probably better than him. You've obviously got Downing. You've got Nyambi, who I've seen putting a good shift at centre-half. Yeah. You know, these at are players... At what point do you let him go, then? At what point do you say this, like... Can't I think you've, you've given him the deal because you're looking, it's probably low cost. I can't imagine it'll be on much money. It's the sort of player that could... Turn out to be, do good for us. I mean, Lenehan. It was Lenehan was only young. It wasn't so. It wasn't that young when he first really came into the forefront of the side, was he? Under Paul Lambert, I know he had uh, a bit under Boyer, didn't he? Um, but he really came under came to the the, the main bit under Lambert. Um, and he was, I think, he was about twenty two, twenty three at that point. I think could be wrong with that one. Yeah. But I don't think he was really young. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's probably low cost, like I said, and that gives him the reason he's probably done it. Because I, I don't think right now he's good enough. I'm being brutally honest. Yeah. I, I do want him to break through, but may, I think maybe it better for him if we just, like, say, look, move on, go and go on start your career, because I feel we're holding him back. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully I'll have a good season and break through. Um, life on hold uh, from Twitter. Um, how do you compare our current squad to that which got relegated in 16-17, Matt? Well, uh, um, better, I think. Better kind of quality last season. I think I think the, the clear out at the end of the relegation season was was needed and, 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 and the players who left needed to go. Um, so, and the players that we brought in, I thought were significantly, you know, better suited. The, the young, the hungry, you know, the, uh, they want to prove themselves like Dax, Smallwood, um, you know, a chance, a, you know, Mulgrew stayed. So, yeah, it's, it, I, I, it, it's, it, time will tell, I think, if the, if the better at this level than, than, um, that 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 squad, but they couldn't really do any worse, could they? To be honest, so 
it's um, it's uh, let's let, let's just see what the uh, the next nine months bring, and we'll we'll, we'll see who we get. I, I, we'll we'll get we'll get some additions no doubt you know so we'll 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 probably have we'll we're probably speaking in a, another couple of weeks where we've you know we've added you know two three four four players uh and, and it and it changes kind of the squad dynamics even even better in our favor we hope yeah um i must admit i was going the other way quite honestly i think we might be in a worse position just We've got a number of old in players, haven't we? And I just, I don't know. I, I, I'll let Tom answer it because let's see what he says. Uh, I think it's, it depends on how you look at it, isn't it? Um, you've got probably, a, well, definitely a better manager. Yeah. Now, better feel to the place. Um, I mean, I probably have to agree with Matt overall. I hate to say it, Lee, <laughs> but um, Fine. I just think, I just think that the reason there's a bit of negativity—not negativity, but the reason there's a bit of apprehension—I think is because of the lack of business, um, in terms of striker. Um, I think that's a bit of a bit of an issue for some people. I mean, I can understand why, because it is frustrating. But I think that as a as a team, as a squad of players, I think we're in a better position. You look at the types of players that Coyle brought in, Anthony Stokes, Marvin Emnes, who was all right if you're a mid-table championship team, but when your backs are to the wall and you really need to dig in, Marvin Emnes isn't the type of player that you're wanting to... You, isn't that a player you wanting to drive your team Lucas forward? You need someone that was going to put a foot in. Yeah, there's Lucas Jow, who's been brilliant at Sheffield Wednesday and did a, did a decent job for us. But, you know, they weren't players that you looked at and thought, really, it could make that difference. Now I look at the team and I think this is a team that will fight for each other. If Dak's having a bad game, I know that Bennett is going to scream at him and tell him what 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 for. You know what I mean? Yeah. If Graham's having a bad game, I know that someone's going to be there to scream at him and not screaming him to demoralise him, but to pick him back up. And I think that's what we've got now. So that's why probably I was I'd say our squad's better now. We're in a better position coming up than what we were in the season we got relegated. Yeah. I think defensively we are. Nyambi, I think, is world-class, to be quite honest. I, I, <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> you laugh, but I swear, I, honestly, I think he's brilliant. He's, just watch uh, the way he tracks a man back. world-class, though, Lee. Maybe not yet, but give him time, well, honestly. <laughs> well, um, Mulgrew, getting old, but he, he, he's still going to do a job, surely. Lenny Han, world-beater. Um Williams, oh, I've been critical, but you know he he can do a job. I think um, it's when you move forward. Smallwood is questionable. He's yeah, he was brilliant for his last season, but he's played in the championship before, and he was like nothing special. People were saying he was rubbish. Um, Benno, he's going to give you one hundred and ten percent. Same as Conway, is that going to be good enough? Um, two young lads that we really don't know anything about. Uh, Whittingham, God knows what he's going to do. And then you've got Graham, legs might be gone, Samuel. I'm being really negative here, but I just think from back upwards, there's uh, there's so many questions um, where at least before Graham and Gallagher were able to score goals for us, all right, not enough in the end. But uh, yeah, that was my take on it anyway. That's why I thought that. So, But I'm, I'm wrong, obviously. It's two on one. Um, but yeah, <laughs> silence. Um, we'll move on to the next one. Um, Nat underscore Briggs again, 17 from Snapchat. Um, do you think Lewis Travis should be starting most matches this season, Tom? Um, starting, not in the squad, but starting 11, I'm going to go for. I don't know about starting, but I mean, 
he's done himself no harm. I think he's been the one that's impressed me the most this preseason. Um, and if I'm being honest, I think had he not been red carded against Portsmouth, I think there's a good chance he'd have forced his way into that first team towards the back end of last season. I really do. Because I think that every time I've seen him, every time I've seen him, I've been impressed with him. I've never seen him have what I would consider a bad game. He comes on, he looks calm, collected. He passes the ball, he wins it back. Um, And yeah, I've, I've been really impressed with him. And... I don't think he'll be far off, but I, I don't think he'll start the game. See, he's another one you have to lump in midfield, though, isn't he? Because you can't, you can't replace I mean, the Ambi. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you could say, oh, well, he could play right wing back. But, I mean, Nyambe has pretty much got that position locked down. Um, obviously, Travis could be there for strength and depth. Nyambe might break his leg first game of the season. I bloody hope he doesn't. But, you know, it's one of those, it's football. You, you don't know what's going to happen. So, Travis would come in in that position. But when I've seen Travis play, I think that he looks like a very good central midfielder rather than a fullback, which is where I believe he's played in the... or where he, he was originally played in, in the youth squad. Yeah. Do you think he should be starting in the first 11, Matt? Do you think he's good enough? Um, well, I... Uh, uh... I'll just echo what, what Tom said, really, that, you know, he, he's doing himself, you know, a lot of favours. He's putting in uh, very strong performances in, in, in pre-season. Uh, you know, he, 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 you know, you could see that he was going to try and impress uh, last season. And, you know, it, it's just that, you know, he, he got that red card against Portsmouth and, who know, who knows what might have happened really if he if he'd not got that red card and, and, and carried on in, in in the squad. Uh I think that kind of I think they put the brakes on him after that, I I, I believe. You know, they it was kind of put back in the the development squad. Yeah. Um after yeah. that red card at, at Portsmouth. So it, who knows, it might be his season to season to shine, but I I would I would expect uh, Mowbray to go with you know experience the first couple of games of of, of the season uh, against Ipswich and Neil Wall and, and you know maybe slot Travis in at, at, a, at a later time you know we might again we might be sat here in six weeks time or you know in, in when we've played a few games and saying oh Travis has played. Thirty, you know, sixty percent of those games, and we've won every time he's played because he's done this, that, and the other. You know, he, he, we're, you know, we, 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 hopefully he will, he, he will come to the forefront now and and try and establish himself as the next, you know, the, the next player from the academy to to be a regular first teamer. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. He's been impressive. Um, no, let's. Try and fly through these. F McKenna, BRFC95 from Snapchat. Out of all the players we are currently linked with, uh, which one are you most? Uh, which one would you most like to sign? I only know like the City one, and I can't even remember his name. I was really excited about Harrison, uh, but he's been. I don't know whether there was a proper link. See, but he's another one that I wasn't. I wasn't too fussed about when it wasn't one of those where when we missed out on him, I, I felt gutted about. It. I just thought, eh. Yeah, he didn't really. He, he looks like he's blows hot and cold a lot, and like I said, just meh. He's he's not a proven striker, is he? Like we said, we needed. So, is there anyone else, Tom? Do you, can you think of anyone? Or is there anyone that you're excited about or you would like? Um, to sign? I know that today there's been a report um, of Ashley Fletcher, who's at Middlesbrough, I believe. He could, I think he's at Middlesbrough. Yeah, I believe he's at Middlesbrough. Spent last season on loan at Sunderland, which doesn't sound great. But I think he's a local lad. I believe he's from. Yeah, he's from. He's from uh, yeah, he's, he's from around these parts. Yeah, yeah, so you know him. He knows the area. Um, his brother's my age, actually. Uh, but he's he's a player that we could bring in, but he doesn't really excite me. 
Nemecha, again, he's probably excites me a little bit just because of the good things I've heard about him, but I don't really know that much about him. So I'll say Harry Chapman. To um, Even though I said before it was a bit of a risk um, yeah. and that he might not be starting, just because we know what he's about and he's an exciting player when he gets on the ball, I'd say he's probably what excites me the most. But there's no one this summer that really jumps out to me. I think, yeah, we should sign him. What about you, Matt? I don't know really because it's it's still very quiet, isn't it? Um, it's still still very quiet out there. You, you, you know, Premier League clubs are haven't got their full complement of squads back from the World Cup yet. So you know we we could be in in a position in in a couple of weeks' time where you know we're able to kind of you know tap Man City up or tap United up or another Premier League club, you know, saying, you know, what's what's this player's availability like for our own? Um, so I, I really don't know. I can't. It, it, it's it's so dead out there. It's it's like under the. It's like being like we were managed again by Mark Hughes because he always he always kept you know transfer deal you know dealings really quiet until the very last minute, and you know we we were signing players out of left field, a bit like Rothwell and, uh, and Davenport, really, which we, we, we heard, you know, whispers about that we, 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 were, we were going for them. But, yeah, um, I, I, like I said, I, I'm, there's no one really who, who jumps out that we've we've been linked with, really, and thinking, oh, yeah, he would he would jump out. Obviously, our, we've got Armstrong and, and, and Chapman being repeatedly mentioned. Uh, and and saying that we're 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 nearly signing them, but we'll we'll just have to see. Uh, but short answer is no. There's 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 no players probably apart from Armstrong who I, I would I would like to like to sign. I'd like to be here on on the yeah. first game. Of the well, season. next question is Jack underscore Pearson eighteen from Snapchat. Do you think Armstrong is on his way, Matt? I'm guessing it means that he's on his way to to us. Obviously, Tom's mentioned this earlier on, but do you think it's going to happen? I I hope it does, but I, I, as as Tom's already said earlier, I hope we don't kind of blow a massive amount of budget on it. Which, from from what's what's been said, um, but we, we might have to. But we we might be able to cut a deal with Newcastle. I I, I don't know. It's it, it's. It's in, it's in, you know, it's he's obviously not got a future on in Newcastle, which is it's a shame for him. I know that's his his local local side, um, but you know, it he'd be coming to a club that that knows what he's about. He you know he fits in well with the with the team. Can it again? Can he take that step up? Because um, because he needs to. He didn't do too well in the first half of the season with Bolton. Uh, but they, I think they were playing more, more as a winger. They weren't, they weren't, they were just, they just had a target man of Gary Medine. But, um, but he, um, you know, he just, he, if we do bring him back in, he's, he's got to, got to prove to Mowbray that he, he was worth, worth the yeah. gamble. Yeah, I personally would, I think it's too much of a risk, like we said earlier, that to, to blow that on him. Morbury, I trust Morbury, as I said before. Um, that That's all the questions done. So thank you for your questions. Don't forget to get them in for next week. Um, one last thing I wanted to touch on before we leave is something we've not mentioned is outgoings. Do you see any outgoings coming, Tom? I know there was mentionings of uh, Gladwin. I think Tomlinson going out alone. A couple of like League One and Two teams interested. Do you see any sales or loans? Thanks. Um, I think Caris will be on his way. <laughs> Would you? He has, he, has, no, he has problems with his weight, doesn't he? It seems that he always comes back. He's a, he's got a bit of fat on him, and he's never really looked that fit for us. Would you say that Ben and it's Travis an are adequate cover there, or do you think we would need to? Yeah, I'd say that if Nyambi was to get injured, I'd be happy with Bennett filling in. I'd be happy with Travis fitting in. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say someone that we need. And if he wants to bring someone else in, I'd sooner see someone from the academy come up than Fat Paul <laughs> Caddis. And that's just the way it is. It's, it's, yeah, 
he looks like the Mitchell man. <laughs> oh. And it's it's just the uh, that's not what you want from a professional footballer. Like he's probably like when you look at him. He's probably not that oh, far. Look at the way Donny looks it's just towards the, fact the end. That he's well, weird. We, all, we all wanted that's him to what, play. That's what I mean. But, but no, but that's what I mean. But he's he's look at we look at the athletes now that we've got. To look at Dominic Samuel compared to Paul Caddis. Do you know what I mean? And he he just, he just looks like he's unfit. That's why he wasn't picked played against. That's why I didn't play against Liverpool. Probably why he was in the under twenty threes game against Darwin, a semi pro team. Simply because he's probably not got the fitness to to play professional at the moment. I must have had a yeah. bad summer. A few too many <laughs> Oh, anyone else? Is that it. Just Caddis. Get the get Gladwin, the fatty out. If he went, I don't know. It's not because he's fat that I want him out. He's not very good. Uh, but Gladwin, I think if we were cashing on him, I wouldn't be too. Cashing? Don't think anyone would give him, us really. money for Whittingham. Gladwin, would they? Not willingly. No, I think they. I think that. A League One club might Whittingham yeah. maybe as well. What about you, Matt? He's not done much, but I don't think he'll be anyone. Gone. Um, you've you've got I think you've you've got to got to be sensible who who we who we let out the door. Um, we've got to, we've, we've got to have a suitable replacement before we before we let anybody leave. You know, you, you talk about Caris. I know there's, there's there's been issues with his with his weight. You know, it's been mentioned a few times um, already. Um, you know, me, me, you know where, where does you know Tomlinson fit in? You know, he's he's had a, you know he scored a goal at Hibs. Um, you know, is he in, is he in the plans? Is he kind of going to be a squad player this year? Gladwin. Uh, is he going to be a squad player this year? Uh, what did is, is Whittingham going to be around? I don't know. Merely, um, not all is he. Again, we, I mentioned it before. Is he going to be sent out on loan, or is he going to go back to the development squad? So it's it, it's very up very up in the air. But I think we need. I think we probably need to concentrate more on incomings and perhaps out. Uh, Worry too much about outgoings at the moment, but if if they happen, yeah. then they, they're going to happen yeah, for the right definitely. reason. Um, I wouldn't personally. I wouldn't send Nuttall out. I think it, it, he needs playing the first team because everyone wants him to, and it, uh, possibly good enough. Uh, but we'll wait and see. Um, so yeah, that's it. First first episode of the the new season. It, it was long, drawn out, um, but we got through it. A lot of questions. Um, but thanks for the questions and thanks Matt uh, for coming on and, and talking again as always and uh, and thank you Tom mm-hmm. and uh, congratulations on the, the quiz win so that's <laughs> I win everything one up. well we'll uh, we'll see won't we we will see um, but yeah thanks very much everyone to listening to this if you got to the end congratulations you deserve a medal um, but as always, go on to Twitter, questions, read the articles, fantastic articles, uh, and yeah, let's get the season going. We'll be back next week, previewing the season and reviewing the preseason, and uh, hopefully we have some transfers to talk about. Who knows? But yeah, let's uh, let's get it down to We Road tomorrow or yesterday, whenever it's going to be, probably yesterday, and um, beat Everton. That'll be good. But yeah, thanks very much, and uh, I'll see you two next week, and I'll see you lot next week as well, if you decide to come back. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for listening to this week's show. If you've enjoyed it, head over to our Twitter at Rovers underscore chat and let us know. And also don't forget to get your questions in for next week's show. And check out the website roverschat.com for all the latest news and opinion articles. Mm-hmm.